Hello, grade 10 students. Today I'm here to teach you chapter 15 in your textbook that's called Equations. Today we are going to learn about simple equations, simultaneous equations, and quadratic equations. Now we'll take a simple equation like this 7 plus something is equal to 10. Why this is an equation? You get two sides with an equal sign. So here this is like a balance. One side you have 10 and the other side 7 plus something. So the balance is not equal distance. So what happens? How can we make it equal? So we have to put something here to make this equal to 10. What's the number we have to put? So we need to put 3 to that. So here without doing manually, we can just take this one as, as an unknown letter. So I can write the same thing like 7 plus x, this is the unknown term, is equal to 10. Then we can find out x. We call it solving simple equations. So how we solve before that, we did before, uh, that means in grade uh, 9, we did simple equations. How can we do that? We can get rid of this 7, subtract 7 from both sides. Then 7 and minus 7 get cancelled out, you get x here. 10 minus 7, you get 3. So the unknown term you can find using this equation. So today we are going to learn about that. Now we'll take these equations. Now you don't need to write minuses in both sides. I'll show you a short method. You get used to that. When you take this one, this is the unknown letter x. How can we find out? So here first step is to get rid of this 3. Plus 3 is there so you need to subtract 3. So what I'm writing is only right hand side. I can write down this one as x equals 7 minus 3. I'm taking this 3 to the other side. What happens when I take 3 to the other side? Pluses becomes minus. Plus 3 becomes minus 3. So I can straight away write down 7 minus 3 is equal to 4. This one, how can we find out this x? x minus 5 equals 4. So you need to get rid of this minus 5. What's the opposite of minus 5? Plus 5. So when you take this one to the other side, this becomes plus 5. So 4 is already there. 4 plus 5, you get 9. This one? Multiplied x by 4. What's the opposite of multiplication? You have to divide by 4. I can write this one as x equals 20 divided by 4. What is 20 divided by 4? You get 5. So the unknown term is 5. This one, x divided by 11. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. We need to multiply this by 11 to get x. 11 times 2, you get 22. This one, multiply by minus 6x. What's, what's the opposite of multiplication? You have to do division x becomes 12 divided by minus 6. Here, plus divide by minus. What's the sign you are getting? You are getting minus. 12 divided by 6 is 2. So the answer is minus 
2. This one divided by minus 2. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So we do multiply this by minus 2. 5 times minus 2 you get minus 10. Now look at carefully when you want to solve equations what did we do? We use the opposite operation or we, we call it inverse operation. Okay here we added 3. What's the operation? Inverse operation. To get this one you subtract minus 3. Here subtracted minus 5. What's the inverse of that? We added 5. This one multiplied by 4. What's the inverse? Divide by 4. This one divide by 11. Inverse is multiplied by 11. Multiplied by minus 6. So you have to divide by minus 6. Last one. Divided by minus 2. We take multiplied by minus 2. So when you are solving simple equations, you need to know inverse operations. So you need to remember this. We call inverse operations. When you have addition, you subtract. Subtraction becomes addition. Multiplication becomes division. Division becomes multiplication and you need to look at the number when you are multiplying or divide. So when you know this, it's really easy to solve simple equations. Now we'll think about the flow chart. Without solving that equation, we can use the flow chart. So what happens when you want to draw the flow charts? This is the unknown letter. So we start with the unknown letter. So we take x as the unknown. What's the first operation? So we need to multiply this by 3. So the first operation is multiplied by 3. Then what you get when you multiply x by 3, you get 3x. That's how you get 3x term. Then to that term added 2. What's the second operation? Added 2 to that. Then what's the answer? 3x plus 2 becomes 3x plus 2. After that it's given this is 17. Now we'll try to do the inverse process. When you are taking the inverse process you can start from here. This is a given as 17. What we do to plus 2? We subtract 2. Of inverse of plus 2 becomes minus 2. 17 minus 2. What you get? You get 15. So this becomes 3x equals 15. Then what happens? Multiplication becomes division. 15 divided by 3. You get 5. So what's the answer for x? x becomes 5. So when you are drawing the flow chart, you need to understand what's the first step. You can't just do addition and then do multiplication. The order is important. 
always think about what's the unknown letter, then do the correct order. Now, without drawing that, without drawing the flow chart, we'll try to solve using normal procedure. Now, I'll write the same equation, 3x plus 2 equals 70. Now, what's the first step we have to do? We have to get rid of this 2. So, take 2 to the other side, it becomes 17 minus 2. What's the answer? 17 minus 2 is 15. Now, we got 3x equals 15. How can we find out x? We need to divide this by 3. So, x becomes 15 divided by 3. You get 5. So, here we can do this method. When you are asked to solve simple equations and you don't need to draw the flow chart. But when you draw the flow chart, you can easily understand the steps. Now try to draw a flow chart for this one. What's the first step here? This is the unknown letter. So if you take unknown letter as x, first step is multiplied by 5. When you multiply by 5, what you get? You get 5x. Then to that 5x, subtracted minus 1. Then you will end up with 5x minus 1. Then the whole thing divided by 4. When you divide by 4, you get 5x minus 1 divided by 4. That's what you are getting. But it's given as 6. So you have to do the reverse process. So when you are talking about reverse process, you, you can start from here starting with 6. Then what's the opposite of division of 4? Multiply by 4. 6 times 4, you get 24. Then subtract 1 means opposite is plus 1. 24 plus 1, you get 25. 25 divide by 5. Opposite of multiplication, divide by 5, you get 5. So what's the unknown value? Unknown value becomes 25 divided by 5 is 5. Now, without the flow chart, we can do this way. So, what's the equation here? 5x minus 1 over 4 equals 6. What's the first step? First step is this. You need to multiply this by 4. I can write 5x minus 1 is 4 times 6. 4 times 6 is 24. Then what's the next step? You have to get rid of this minus 1. Minus 1 when you take it to the other side becomes plus 1. 5x becomes 24 plus 1. 24 plus 1 is 25. Then 5x equals 25. So how can we find out x? You need to divide this by 5. 25 divided by 5, you get 5 as the answer. Now we look at the review exercise in your textbook. It says solve the following equations. In this case, you get x in both sides. So what is the first step? You have to take all x terms to one side and take the other terms to the other side. Here I can do at once, I can take x to this side. So what happens? 2x I'm not changing, so we can write as it is. Here I can take x to the other side and write minus x because this is plus 6. 8 I can take it to the right hand side. 12 is already there, I can write 12. 8 when I take it to the other side, this becomes minus 8.
2x minus x, you get 1x or I can write x 12 minus 8 is equal to 4. So here what we did, x I took to this side and 8 to the other side. B, you get brackets now. First, you need to expand brackets or I can get rid of these two by doing the opposite operation. So I'll do that way. So here, this is divisible. So I can divide both sides by two. When I divide the, both sides by two, what, what am I getting? Two get cancelled out. I get x minus three. Four divided by two, I get two. Now you can find x by adding 3 to 2. 3 plus 2 becomes 5. So the answer is x equals 5. This one, we have to expand brackets first because I can't divide the whole equation by 2 because you get 5x there. So I can first do open brackets. 5x minus 8 equals 2 times 3, I get 6. 2 times minus 6 minus 2x. Then what's the next step? We have to take all x terms to one side. I can take this one to this side and minus 8 to the other side. I can straight away write down. 5x plus 2x is equal to 6 is already there. Minus 8 becomes plus 8. 8 plus 6, 14. 5 plus 2, you get 7. So 7x equals 14. So what is x? You divide this by 7. Answer is 2. This one. You can't divide this by 2 or 3 because not divisible. Only step is to expand brackets. 2 times y, 2y. Two, 2 times 3, you get 6. 3 times y, 3y. Three, 3 times minus 1, you get minus 3. Then what's the next step? 2y is there, 3y is there. Which y we need to take? When we are taking to the other side, take the smaller one to the other side. When you compare 3y and 2y, 2y is smaller. So I can take 2y to the other side and then this number to the left hand side. I can write when I take minus 3 to this side plus 3. 3 plus 6 is equal to 3y minus 2y. 3y minus 2y is y. 6 plus 3, you get 9. Now we'll take this one. What's the first thing we can do? We can expand brackets. We'll expand these two brackets and write down. 4 is there. Minus 5 times 3, minus 15. Minus 5 times minus p, you get plus 5p. 2 times p, you get 2p. 2 times minus 1, you get minus 2. Then we can simplify. 4 minus 15, I can write as minus 11 plus 5p equals 2p minus 2. Now take p terms to one side and numbers to the other side. Smaller p I am taking to the other side. So this one to the right. I can write 5p minus 2p because I'm taking 2p plus 2p to the other side. Minus 2 is already there. I'm taking minus 11 to the right hand side. So that becomes plus 11. 11 minus 2 becomes 9. 5 minus 2, 3p. How can I find P? P is 9 
divide by 3. 9 divided by 3, I get 3. This one, what's the first step we need to do? We need to get rid of this plus 1. So I'm taking plus 1 to the other side. x over 2 is equal to 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. Now division is there. Opposite of division is multiplication. So I can write 2 times 2. You get 4 as the unknown x. This one, 5 is there. So it's better to take 5 to the other side first. Minus x over 4 is there. 1 minus 5. 1 minus 5, you get minus 4. Minus x over 4 is minus 4. To get x, I need to multiply it by minus 4. So this one I can write down here. This minus sign I, here. That's not an issue. Either I can write in the numerator or denominator. So this minus I can write minus 4. Then I can clearly see I have to multiply by minus 4. We'll multiply by minus 4 now. x becomes minus 4 times minus 4. You get plus 16. Minus into minus becomes plus. This one, 3 is extra. We have to get rid of this 3. I'm taking this to the right hand side. Minus 2x over 5 is equal to 1 minus 3. 1 minus 3 is minus 2. Then to get x, what I need to do, I can do at once. I can first multiply this by 5. 5 times minus 2 and then divide this by minus 2. Minus 2, minus 2 get cancelled out. I get x equals 5. Look at this one. Now you get fractions with unequal denominator. What's the first step? You have to make the denominators equal. Or we can find out the lowest common multiple. 3 and 4, what's the lowest common multiple? You get 12. I can convert to 12 so that this is multiplied by 4. I get 4x. This one, to get 12, I need to multiply by 3. 3 times x, 3x. This is equal to 7. 4x plus 3x is 7x. Now I can find x using the opposite operations. 7 multiplied by 12 and divide by 7. 7, 7 get cancelled out and I can write this as 12. This one already divided by 4. First step is to get rid of this 4. I can write opposite of division as multiplied by 4. 2 times 4, 8. 5x minus 2 is 8 and 5x equals 8 plus 2. That's 10. 5x equals 10. How can we find out x? You have to divide this by 5. Answer is 2. This one. This is the unknown term. And added 1. First step is to get rid of this 1. 
I can write a minus 3 over 2 is 4 minus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. Then the next step, I can multiply this by 2. 2 times 3, 6. Then I can add 3. A becomes 6 plus 3, that's 9. This one, again you get different denominators, 2, 4, 2. So what's the lowest common multiple of 2 and 4? That's 4. So what I can do to get rid of this denominator, I can multiply all these terms by 4. That's the lowest common multiple of 2 and 4. Then what happens? When I multiply by 4, this 2 and this 4 get cancelled out and I get 2 here. 4 and 4 get cancelled out. This 2 and this 4, I get 2 here. Now, expand brackets and then simplify. 2 times x, I get 2x. 2 times 1 plus 2. This is 1. 1 times x, 1x. One, 1 times minus 3, minus 3. This is equal to 2. 2x and x, like terms, I can add. That becomes 3x. 2 minus 3 minus 1 equals 2. 3x equals minus 1. When you take it to the other side, that becomes plus 1. 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3x is 3. How can I find x? Divide by 3. 3 divided by 3, I get 1. Now we'll look at solving equations with fractions with unknown denominator. Earlier, the unknown term was in the numerator. Now in this example, the unknown term in the denominator. How can we solve this equation? So like before, we need to make the same denominator here. So here. Look at carefully. 12 divided by 2x, you can simplify. So I can write easily this one as 12 over x minus this 2 and this 12 get cancelled out and I can write 6 here. 6 over x is equal to 2. Now you get the same denominator. I can just subtract the numerators. 12 minus 6 is 6. The common denominator is x. That's equal to 2. Then what's the next step? Here, can you remember when you get something fraction equal to another fraction, I can do cross multiplication. So instead of this 2, I can write 2 over 1. Then cross multiplication of these two. This into this and this into this. So what, what you call this? Cross multiplication. I can write 6 times 1, 6. x times 2, 2x. I can write x as 6 divided by 2. That's equal to 3. Now I want to? Make sure that cross multiplication is correct. I'll take a small example for that. I'll take 3 over 4. And I can equa equate to an equivalent fraction. 6 over 8. 3 over 4 is same as 6 over 8. Now I'll cross multiply and see what happens. 8 times 3, 4 times 6. 8 times 3 is 24. 4 times 6 is 24. So, this is equal. So, it is true. Another one. 2 over 3 
is equal to 2 times 3. I can write 6 and 9. Those are equivalent fractions. I'll cross multiply and see. 2 times 9, 3 times 6. 3 times 6 is 18, 9 times 2 is 18. So this is true. So that means when you get any two fractions equal, you can use cross multiplication. Generally, if any fraction A over B is equal to C over D, I can cross multiply and write down AD is equal to BC. So this formula is important. When you get two fractions like this, you can use cross multiplication. Now we look at example one in your textbook. You have given several friends shared 60 mangoes equally. One of them, Amal, sold three of his mangoes and then he had only two mangoes left. How many friends shared the mangoes? So this is a worded problem. So we need to use equations to solve. So we can take number of friends as x. I'll write down number of friends. is equal to x. This is 60 mangoes shared equally with x number of friends. So what's the number of mangoes for each person? I can write number of mangoes per person. 60 mangoes are there. If there are 2 people, 60 divided by 2. If, you, if we have 3 people, 60 divided by 3. Now we have x number of people. 60 divided by x. And here, one of the friend is called Amal. So Amal also getting 60 over x number of mangoes. But he sold three of his mangoes. So what is left now? Number of mangoes left for Amal. Earlier he had 60 over x number of mangoes and he sold three mangoes. So we need to subtract three. So this is equal to 2. It's already given. Now, this is an equation we can solve for x. I can write 60 over x minus 3 equals 2. Then what's the first step? I can add 3. 2 plus 3 is 60 over x. That's equal to 5. Now again I see two fractions equal. I can write this one as 1 and do cross multiplication. 60 times 1, 60. And 5 times x, 5x. How can I find x? I need to divide this by 5. 60 divided by 5, I get 12 as x. So what is x? Number of friends. In this question, they asked how many friends shared the mangoes. So how many friends? Altogether, 12 friends. Example number 2. This is a fraction with the same denominator. What we can do to the left hand side? We can just add the numerators. 3 plus 2 
I can write as 5. Then again, fraction equal to another fraction, we can use cross multiplication. 5 times 2 is equal to a times 1. a 5 times 2 is 10. This example, again, already fractions given, you can cross multiply. 2 times 3, we get 6. 1 times x plus 2, I get x plus 2. So, what's the answer? I can easily find out x by subtracting 2 from the other side. 6 minus 2 is 4. So, the answer is x equals 4. Example number 4, what we can do? This is also two fractions I can cross multiply. 2 times 2, I get 4. 4 times x minus 3 is equal to 3 times x plus 5. Then I can expand brackets. 4 times x, 4x. 4 times minus 3, minus 12. 3 times x, 3x. And 3 times 5. I get 15. Then we take the smaller x to the other side. So 4 and 3. 3x is the smallest. So I can take this one to this side. So this number to the right hand side. I can write 4x minus 3x is equal to 15. Already there. Minus 12. I can write plus 12. 15 plus 12 is 27. 4x minus 3x is x. So x equals 27. This one, you get fractions with different denominators. So you have to find out the lowest common multiple. x minus 1 is there. 2 times x minus 1 is there. So what's the lowest common multiple? 2 times x minus 1. To get the same denominator, I need to multiply this by 2. 2 times 2, I get 4. This one, same denominator, you don't need to do anything. So 4 minus 1 is equal to 3 over 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. I can do cross multiplication or do you see, see anything common to both sides? I can easily simplify also. I'll do both ways. If, I, if you see this one, you, you don't need to cross multiply. 3 is in, the, in both numerator. I can divide both sides by 3. So when I divide this by 3, what happens? I get 1 over 2x minus 1 is equal to 1 over 4. And also I can see 2 and 4, common 1 is 2. I can multiply this by 2. When I multiply both sides by 2, what happens? Multiply by 2, multiply by 2, I get... 2 get cancelled out, I get 1 over x minus 1 and here I get half. And then I can do the cross multiplication. When I do cross multiplication, 2 is equal to x minus 1, x equals 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. If you don't see this, don't worry, just you can cross multiply and we can get the same answer. 3 times 4, 12. 3 times 2, 6, x minus 1. I can expand brackets and write down 6x minus 6 is equal to 12. When I take 6 to this side, 12 plus 6 is 18 is equal to 6x. Divide both sides by 6. 
I get 18 divided by 6 is 3. You get the same answer. Sometimes when you see common factors, just cross it out and do the cross multiplication. Now we'll look at exercise 15.1 in your textbook. In question number one, a father and his sons equally shared an amount of 270 rupees. Then the amount each person had was 45 rupees. Taking the number of sons as x, construct an equation. Solve this equation and hence find the number of sons the father has. Now look at carefully the first sentence. A father and his sons equally shared an amount. So how many in total shared this amount? X sons and the father. So what's the total amount of person? X plus 1. So you have to first find number of people. Number of people sharing this amount. Number of sons X plus father. This becomes X plus 1. What's the amount? Sharing 270. So what's the amount of money each person gets? Two hundred and seventy divide by x plus one. But it's given the amount is forty five. So you can equate this to forty five. When you are simplifying two hundred and seventy over x plus one is equal to forty five, you can write this one as one. Now cross multiply. 270 times 1 is 270, 45 times x, 45x, plus 45 times 1 is 45. Now take 45 to the other side. 45x is equal to, yeah, I can write either this side here as well. I can write 45x is equal to 270 minus 45. What's the answer? When I take subtraction, I get 5 here, 5, 5, 10, 1 remaining, 5 plus 2, 7, and 2 here. 225 is 45 x. So what is x? 225 divided by 40. Five. You can easily divide this by 15. 15 times 15 is 225. 15 times 3 is 45. So 15 times 3, 45. 15 times 15. So 15 times 3 becomes 5. So how many sons that the uh, uh, that father has? Five sons. Question number two. When the same number was added both to the numerator and the denominator of the fraction 3 over 5, the resulting fraction was equal to 9 over 10. What number was added? I can take the number we are adding as x. So the numerator is 3, denominator is 5. So I can add the same number to the denominator as well as to the denominator. When I add any unknown value, the resulting value becomes 9 over 10. Then we can cross multiply and find out the unknown value x. 10 times 3 plus x is equal to 9 times 5 plus x. 10 times 3, 30. 10 times x, 10x. 9 times 5, 45. 9 times x is 9x. Now take 
x terms to one side. Smaller is smaller one is 9, I can take this one to this side. 10x minus 9x. 30, I can take it to the other side. 45 minus 30. 45 minus 30 is 15. 10x minus 9x is x. So the value added both to the numerator is 15. Question number 3. Solve the following equations. First one is easy because you get the same denominator. So what we do, you can just add the numerator. 5 plus 2, you get 7. Then cross multiply and get m value. 7 times 2 is 14. m times 1 is m. So the answer is m equals 14. Now here, the denominators are not the same. So we need to convert to the same denominator. 5 and 1, lowest common multiple is 5. So that means the common denominator is 5x. No need to do anything because 5x is in the denominator. Here we need to multiply by 5 to get 5x. 5 times 1 is 5. Then 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 over 5x equals 2. Cross multiply. I can write 1 there and cross multiply. 8 times 1. 8, 2 times 5, 10. So what's the answer? x is equal to 8 divided by 10 or I can simplify and write 4 over 5. Part C, 6x and 3x. What's the common denominator? Lowest common multiple, 6x. I can convert to 6x. 5 is already there. This one I need to multiply by 2. 2 times 3 6x, 2 times 2 4 is equal to 1 over 6. 5 minus 4 is 1 and then I can cross multiply. 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 6x times 1 is 6x then x becomes divide by 6, you get 1. Here I can do another method here. I can multiply without taking the common denominator. I can multiply the whole equation by 6x because I want to get rid of this denominator. If I multiply all terms by 6x, what happens? These two terms get cancelled out. Here you get 2. Here you get x. Now you can simplify. 5 minus 2 times 2, 4 is equal to x so 5 minus 4 you get 1. Here also if you see the common denominator lowest common multiple you can multiply all terms by that number. Now look at this one 5x and 3x what's the lowest common multiple 5 and 3 15. So 15x is the lowest common multiple. 5x is there, you need to multiply this by 3 to get 15x. This one, you need to multiply by 5. 4 times 3, 12. 1 times 5, 5. Then, simplify. 12 minus 5 is 7. Cross multiply or if you see 7 in both the numerators, you can divide by 7. Or you can cross multiply and write down 7 times 30 is equal to 7 times 15x. So what is x? 7 times 30 
divide by 7 times 15. 7, 7 get cancelled out. 15 times 2 is 30. Answer is x equals 2. This one? This is a fraction. I can write this one as 1 and do cross multiplication. 21 times 1 is 21. 3 times 4m, 12m. 3 times 1, 3. I can take 3 to the other side. 12m is 21 minus 3. I get 18 equals 12m. What's m? 18 divided by 12. 6 times, I can simplify, 6 times 3, 6 times 2. So the answer is 3 over 2. This one, already 2 fractions, I can cross multiply. 7 times 3, 21. 3 times x plus 2. Now expand brackets. 21 equals 3x plus 6, 3x equals 21 minus 6, you get 15. So what's x? You divide this by 3. 15 divided by 3, you get 5. Here, there's a small short method. After this, if you see 3 and 21, is divisible by 3, I can divide both the equations by 3. So here 21 divided by 3, I can straight away get 7. 7 equals x plus 2, x equals 7 minus 2 is equal to 5. So you can use any method. Look at part G. Again, two fractions, cross multiply. 10 times 8, 80. 5 times a, 5a minus 5 times 3, 15. 5a equals 80 plus 15. Opposite of minus 15 is plus 15. You get 95 equals 5a. So what's a value? You divide 95 by Five. So answer is 19. This one, two fractions, cross multiply. 4 times x minus 2 is equal to 3 times x plus 1. 4 times x, 4x. 4 times 2, 8. 3 times x, 3x. Three, 3 times 1, that's 3. 4x minus 3x is equal to 3 plus 8. Because minus 8, when you take it to the other side, that becomes plus 8. 8 plus 3, 11. 4x minus 3x is x value. So x equals 11. This one, again, cross multiplication. 2 times x plus 8 is equal to 3 times x minus 3. Open brackets. You get 2x plus 2 times 6. 2 times 8, 16. 3 times x, 3x. Three, 3 times minus 3, you get minus 9. Which one is smaller? 2x is smaller, so I am taking this one to this side. I can write 3x minus 2x. 16 is there. When I take minus 9 to this side, that becomes plus 9. 16 plus 9 is 25. 3x minus 2x becomes x. So the answer is x equals 25. This question, a plus 1 is the same denominator. I can just add the numerators. 1 plus 3 becomes 4. Then,
cross multiply. 4 times 3, 12. 2 times a, 2a. 2 times 1, 2. So 2a becomes 12 minus 2. What is 12 minus 2? You get 10. 10 equals 2a. How we find out a? You need to divide this by 2. two 10 divided by 2 is 5. Part k, same denominator. x minus 2 is the common denominator. You can just add the numerators. 5 plus 3, 8. Now, instead of this, I can write 2 over 1. Then do cross multiplication. 8 times 1, 8. 2 times x, 2x. 2 times minus 2, minus 4. Then what's the first, uh, second step? What's the second step? I can take minus 4 to this side. 8 plus 4. 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 equals 2x. How can I find x? I can divide this by 2 and write 6. Now in this one, different denominators. So what's the lowest common multiple of this? We can see 2 times 3 plus 1 is the lowest common multiple. Already 5 is there. To get this one, I need to multiply this by 2. So 2 times 1 equals 2. Then simplify. 5 plus 2, you get 7. Here, if you see both 7 is common, I can cross it out. Divide both equations by 7, this get cancelled out. Then do cross multiplication. 8 times 1 is 8. 2 times this is 2p plus 1. Again, I can see 2 is common. Divide both equations by both sides by 2. 2 times 4 is equal to p plus 1. What's the answer for p? You can take 1 to the other side. That's 4 minus 1. Answer is 3. Part M. What's the lowest common multiple of these two? I can write this is as x 3 times x plus 2. Here to get 3 times that, I need to multiply this by 3. 3 times 3, 9. Minus 1 is equal to 8 over 15. 9 minus 1 is 8. Again, I can see 8 is common for both these sides. I can divide by 8. So, this get cancelled out. Now, I can do cross multiplication. 15 times 1 is 15 is equal to 3 times x plus 2. I can divide again this by 3. 3 times 5 is equal to x plus 2. 3 get cancelled out. Now x plus 2 is 5. So what is x? We, we can subtract 2 from 5. 5 minus 2, you get 3 as the answer. Now in this one, you don't get the same term. So what you have to do? What's the lowest common multiple of 2x minus 3 and x plus 3? Both the multiplication. This is different to previous questions. Now how can we get this as the denominator from this? I need to multiply this by x plus 3. What about this one? x plus 3 is there. I need to multiply this by 2x minus 3. Now do that. x plus 3 plus 4 times this one. Shall I straight away write, multiply and write down the answer? 4 times 2x is 8x. 4 times minus 3 is minus 12. That's equal to 0. Then simplify the numerator. 8x and x, you get 9x. 3 minus 12, 
you get minus 9 is equal to 2x minus 3, x plus 3 equals 0. So, 0 over 1. I can write when I do cross multiplication, what happens? 1 times this is 9x minus 9. 0 times any number, 0 times 5 or 0 times 10 or 0 times 100, you get 0. So, 0 times any number, you get 0. Now, take minus 9 to the other side. This becomes plus 9. How can I find x? Divide this by 9. The answer is 1. Part O. P plus 1 is a common denominator and here 2 is there. So, what's the lowest common multiple? 2 times p plus 1. Then here we can write 15. This one we need to multiply by 2 to get the denominator. 3 times 2 you get 6 is equal to 2. I can write this one as 1. 15 minus 6 is 9 over 2p plus 1 is equal to 2 over 1. Cross multiply, 9 times 1 is 9, 2 times 2, 4p plus 1. Then open brackets, 4 times p, 4p plus 4 equals 9. What's 4p? I can write 9 minus 4, that becomes 5. So, the p value is 5 divided by 4. This one, what's the lowest common multiple of 4 and this one? You get 4 times a minus 1. a minus 1 is there, so that means you need to multiply the numerator by 4 to get this one. You get 4 there. This one, 4 is already there, so I need to multiply this by a minus 1. After I multiply this by a minus 1, I get 3a minus 3 is equal to 4 over a minus 1. Now, cross multiply. First, we need to simplify this. 4 minus 3, you get 1. And when you multiply this by this, I get 1 plus 3a. a minus 1 is equal to 4 times 4, 16 times a minus 1. I can divide both sides by a minus 1. So that means this one get cancelled out. 1 plus 3a is 16. 3a equals 16 minus 1. That's 15. So, what's the answer? 15 divided by 3. You get 5 as the a value. Part Q. What's the lowest common multiple? I get 3 and x plus 1. So, you have to multiply this by 3 and this by x plus 1. 3 times 2x, I get 6x. This one, I get 2x plus 2 is equal to 2. I can write this one as 2 over 1. 6x and 2x, 8x plus 2 over 3 times x plus 1 equals 2 over 1 cross multiply. 8x plus 2 is equal to 2 times 3 is 6x. 6x plus 6. Then 6x is the smaller one. Take it to the other side. 8x minus 6x, you get 2x. 6 minus 2, you get 4. 2x is 4. x equals 4 divided by 2, the answer is 2. This one, already fractions are given. I can cross multiply. 
5 times x plus 1 is equal to 4 times x plus 3. Then open brackets, 5 times x, 5x, 4 times x, 4x, and 4 times 3, 12. Now 4x is the smaller one, I can take it to this side. 5x minus 4x, 12 minus 5. 12 minus 5 is 7, 5x minus 4x is x. So the answer is x equals 7. Now we look at what are simultaneous equations. Earlier we did simple equations and you got one unknown. Now simultaneous means you get two equations with two unknowns. For example, 3x plus 4y equals 12. 3x minus 5y equals 9. Now look at these two equations. You get two unknowns, x and y, and you get two equations. So here in simultaneous equations, you need to solve and find out the values for x and y. Now, before we do simultaneous equation, just take these two numbers, minus 3 and 3. We'll take this one as 1 and this one as 2. How can I get rid of this? In first equation, I get minus 3. The second equation, I get 3. When I add these two, what happens? 1 plus 2 minus 3 plus 3, you get 0. So if I want to get rid of this number, I can add these two. Minus 3 and plus 3, you get 0. We'll take another one. 4 and 4. This is first one. And I'll write the second one as minus. Or I'll write the yeah, first one as plus 4 and the second one as minus 4. So what I can do, I can subtract or add. I can add these two to get rid of plus 4 minus 4 when you add you get 0. So what can we see now? When you get same number with different signs this is plus 3 plus this is plus and minus. So same number with different signs we can add it to get rid of the two numbers. So we'll write down When you get same number. Now we are looking at these numbers. Now these numbers are in front of a letter. So we call these are coefficients. So here 3 is the coefficient of x. 4 is the coefficient of y. Here minus 5 is the coefficient of y. So we'll take the coefficients. When you get same coefficient, with different signs or with opposite signs, we need to Add the two equations. Add to get rid of that. So I'll highlight this. When you have same coefficient with different signs, we need to add. Now we'll take the other one. What about same sign? 
plus 4 plus 4. How can I get rid of this? I need to subtract the two equations to get rid of this. 4 plus minus 4, you get 4 minus 4, you get 0. Another one, minus 5 and minus 5. When you add these two, when you subtract these two, it get cancelled out. So 1 minus 2, minus 5. Minus minus 5 becomes plus 5. So minus 5 plus 5, you get 0. So you need to remember when you get same coefficient. Coefficients with same sign, we need to subtract to get rid of that. So I'll highlight the important things, same coefficient with same sign, we subtract. So when we are solving simultaneous equations, you need to remember these two. When you get same coefficient with same sign, we subtract the two equations. When we have same coefficient with different signs, we add the two equations. Now we'll look at these two equations. So here, we can label this one as 1 and this one as 2. Now look at carefully the coefficients. Do we get same coefficients? Look at x coefficients 7 and 2. They are not the same. But when you look at the coefficient of y, this is plus 3, here minus 3. So same coefficients but different signs. So what we do? We add the two equations. So we need to add the two equations to get rid of this y term. So when you add these two, what happens? I'll take the first one as 7x plus 3y plus 2x minus 3y is equal to 17 plus 1. Now we'll add it. 7x and 2x, you get 9x. Plus 3y and minus 3y, it get cancelled out. And you get 17 plus 1 is 18. So what is x? 18 divided by 9, you get 2. Now we found out the value of the x. But we need to find out the value of y as well. How can we find out? So we can take any one of these equations and substitute the x value and get the y value. I'll take the first one. You can do either from 1 or 2. So I'm taking the equation 1. So what I do, I substitute 2 instead of x. So in the first equation, 7 times 2 because x is 2 plus 3y equals 17. Then 14 is here. Now take it to the other side. 3y becomes 17 minus 14. You get 3. So what is y? 3 divided by 3, you get y as 1. So what are the two solutions for this Simultaneous equations, x equals 2 and y equals 1. Now, how can we check whether this is correct? We can take the first equation and substitute these values and see whether you are getting 
17. We'll do that. 2 for x and 1 for y. 7 times 2, 14. 14 plus 1 times 3, 3. 14 plus 3, you get 17. Now take the second equation and substitute. x equals 2. 2 times 2, 4. 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3, you get 1. So that means these two answers are correct. Now we'll take this, this equation. Look at carefully. Which coefficients are equal? Is it x's or y's? We can see the coefficient y of y's are equal. And also same sign. Same coefficient with same sign, we subtract the two equations. So we'll label this one as 1, this one as 2. And subtract 1 minus 2. So what you get? I'll write down separately 5x minus 3y subtract 2x minus 3y is equal to 19 minus 4. 5x and minus 2x, you get 3x. Minus 3y and plus 3y get cancelled out. 19 minus 4 is 15. x equals 15 divided by 3. You get 5. Now what we do? You take one of the equations and find out the y value. I'll take the first equation. 5x. x is 5 now. 5x minus 3y equals 19. 5 times 5, 25. Minus 3y equals 19. So when I take minus 25, that's equal to minus 6 equals minus 3y. How can I find y? I need to divide this by minus 3. Minus minus becomes plus. So 6 divided by 3, we get 2. So what's the solution of these simultaneous equations? x equals 5 and y equals 2. Now look at the third equation. 11a plus 3b. 11a minus 2b. When you look at coefficient of b, co those are not equal. Coefficient of b are not equal. But when you look at coefficients of a, both are equal. What's the sign? This is plus, this is plus. Same coefficients with same sign. So what you do? You have to take the correct action. If you do the wrong action, you are not getting the correct solutions. So when you get same coefficient, same sign, we subtract the two equations. So here, if we take 1 as this and 2 as that, we can subtract 1 minus 2. So take the first equation, subtract the second equation. 25 minus 20, you get 5. 11a minus 11a get cancelled out. You get 3b minus minus becomes plus. So 5b equals 5, b is equal to 5 divided by 5, that's 1. So to find out a, either you can take equation 1 or equation 2. I'll take equation 1. 11a plus 3b, 3 times 1 is equal to 25. 11a equals 25 minus 3, you get 22. So what's, it? what's the a value? 22 divided by 11, you get a as 2. So what's the answer? a is 2 and b equals 1. Now look at this one. 
What's the difference between the previous equations and this one? Coefficient of x, 5 and 7, those are not equal. And look at these two, 3 and 2. Now here we get equations with unequal coefficients. So what we do? You have to make the coefficients equal. Either you can take x or y. Now, if you take x, how can we convert to the common one? 7 and 5 lowest common multiple is 35. So, you need to multiply this by 7 and the second equation by 5 to get 35x. But when it comes to coefficient of y, here you need to multiply this by 2 and the second equation by 3. So, that's easier than multiplying by 5 and 7. So, we'll make the y coefficients equal. So, I can take this one as 1, this one as 2. I can multiply the first equation by 2 because 3 and 2, what's the lowest common multiple? That's 6. So, I can multiply the whole equation by 2. 2 times 5, 10. 2 times 3, 6y. 2 times 21, I get 42. I'll write this one as third equation. And the second equation, I need to multiply by 3. When I multiply this by 3, 3 times 7, 21. 3 times 2, 6. 3 times 7, 21. 2 remaining, 3 times 1, 3 plus 2, so that's the fourth equation. Now we can see the coefficient of y both are equal. What's the sign? Different signs. Same coefficient, different signs. We add the two equations. So I can add 3 and 4 together to get rid of this y value. So, when I add 21 and 10, I get 31x. These two get cancelled out. 42 plus 51, I get 93. So, what's x? 93 divided by 31. So, this is 3. Now, I found x as 3. How can I find y? It's easier to take the original equation rather than taking the third and fourth equation. So, remember when you want to find out the other variable, take either one or two, not the multiplied version. It's difficult to find. So, when you take first equation, I can write 5 times x, 5 times 3, 15 plus 3y equals 21. 3y becomes 21 minus 15. That's equal to 6. y value becomes 6 divided by 3. That's 2. So, what's the solution for this equation? x equals 3 and y equals Now here again unequal coefficients. Which one is easy to make x coefficient equal or to make y coefficients equal? Here you have to multiply this by 13 to get the common, common value. You need to multiply this by 13 to get common value. So we'll take the y coefficient. I'll take this one as 1, this one as 2. I can multiply the first one by 3, second equation by 5 to get 15y. 3 times 7, 21. 15y equals 3 times 4, 12. That's my third equation. Multiply this by 5. 5 times 3, 15. 1 remaining. 5 times 1, 5, 5 plus 1, 6. 
you get 15y again. 5 times 20, you get 100. This is my fourth equation. Now look at the coefficients, same coefficients of y and same sign. So what we do? We subtract the two equations. So when we are subtracting, either I can do 3 minus 4 or 4 minus 3. Which one is easy? This is easy. 4 minus 3, you get a positive answer, 100 minus 12. So I'll do 4 minus 3 instead of 3 minus 4. 65x minus 21x becomes 100 minus 12. Here, this get cancelled out. So what's the answer? So you get 44x is equal to 90, 88, not 98. So x equals 88 divided by 44, you get 2. Now we found out the x value. How can we find out the y value? Take one of these two equations. I'll take the first one. 7x 7 times 2 minus 5y equals 4. 14 minus 5y equals 4. Minus 5y becomes 4 minus 14. 4 minus 14 is minus 10. So what's the y value? Y value becomes minus 10 divided by minus 5 you get positive 2. So what's the solution for this equation? x equals 2 and y equals 2. Now look at example 1 in your textbook. So you get a worded problem. So you have to make the equation and then solve. Look at the example. Sajithi and Sanjana have certain amounts of money. When twice the amount of money Sanjana has is added to the amount of money Sajithi has, we get 110. When th thrice the amount of money Sanjana has is added to twice the amount of money Sajithi has, the amount is 190. Find the amount of money each has. So there are Two people, Sajithi and Sanjana. Here we need to take, take we need to take x as the amount Sajithi has and y as the amount Sanjana has. And it says when twice the amount of money Sanjana has. So this one. Twice of money Sanjana has is added to the amount of money Sajithi has. That's x. We get 110. So that's the first equation in this example. Then it says when thrice the amount of money Sanjana has, thrice the amount of money Sanjana has is added to twice the amount of money Sajithi has. Twice means 2x. That's equal to 190. So this is your second equation. Now we need to find out x and y. Now look at the coefficients. What can we do? Here 2 and 3. Here 1 and 2. So you have to make the coefficients equal. So the easiest one is to consider coefficients of x. So I'll take the first one and multiply it by 2. So 2x here, 2 times 2, 4y, 2 times 200, 2 times 110, I get 220. That's my third equation. Now I can see these two coefficients are equal and same sign. So what we do? We subtract the 
two equations. I can do 3 minus 2 because 220 is bigger than 190. So I'll take 3 minus 2. 2x get cancelled out. 4y minus 3y is equal to 220 minus 190. You get 30. This is y. y equals 30. Now we found out y is 30. So how can we find out x? I can take one of the equations, 1 or 2, and substitute. x plus 2y. 2 times 30, I get 60 is equal to 110. x equals 110 minus 60. You get 50. So x is 50 and y is 30. So what's the answer? x means the amount of money Sajithi has. So I can write Sajithi has x value that means 50 rupees and Sanjana has y value. y value means 30 rupees. Example 2. So again, simultaneous equations with unequal coefficients. What's the easiest one? Either to, to make coefficient of m's equal or n's. 2 and 3, 6. It's easier than multiplying by 5 and 3 here. So I'll take this one as first one and this is as a second one. First multiplied by 3 and second one multiplied by 2. Multiply by 3. 3 times 2, 6m. 3 times 3, 9n. 3 times 3, 9. You get 39 for this one. So this is the third equation. Equation number 2 multiplied by 2. You get 6m. 2 times 5, 10. And 2 times 21 is 42. That's the fourth one. Now, same coefficient, same sign. We subtract the two equations. So, which way is easy? 3 minus 4 or 4 minus 3? 4 minus 3 is easier than this one because otherwise you are getting a negative answer. 4 minus 3. 10n minus 9n is equal to 42 minus 39. 10n minus 9n becomes 1n. This one you get 3 as the answer. So n equals 3. We know n equals 3. Take the first e or second equation and find out the other value. If I take first one, I can do 2 times m plus 3 times 3 is equal to 13. So 2m plus 9 equals 13. 2m becomes 13 minus 9. You get 4. So m equals 4 divided by 2. m equals 2. So what, what are the two solutions? m equals 2. And n equals 3. Now look at the next one. Example 3. The price of 2 oranges and 1 king coconut is 80. 3 king coconuts cost the same amount as 2 oranges. Find the price of an orange and a king coconut separately. So I can take the price of orange as x. And the king coconut price as, as y. We know the two prices, the price of two oranges, that means 2x and one king coconut, that's y is equal to 80. That's the first equation. Now try to write down the second equation. Three king coconuts. Three king coconuts means three y. 
cost the same amount as two oranges. So this is equal to the price of two oranges. That's the second equation. Now we need to solve the two equations. What can I do? I can write here, yeah? when you look at carefully, instead of 2x, I can write 3y. Because in the second equation, 3y equals 2x. So you can substitute this 2x here as 3y. So I'll take the second one and substitute in the first equation. So what am I getting? Instead of 2x, I can write 3y plus y is equal to 80. What is 3y plus y? You get 4y equals 80. What's y? 80 divided by 4, it's 20. Now, we need to find out the x value. So, I can take the second equation and substitute. 3y. 3 times 20, I get 60, is equal to 2x. So what's x? 60 divided by 2, you get 30. So what is x? The price of orange. So x equals 30. So the price of orange is 30 rupees. And what's the y value we found y as 20 that's the price of king coconut value so that's equal to 20 rupees now we look at example 4 solve x equals 3y and the other one given as 2x plus 3y equals 80 now what we can do we can take this one as the first equation, this is as the second equation. Now again look at carefully, instead of 3y I can write as x. So what I can do, I can take the second equation and substitute the first one there. So I can write 2x, instead of 3y I can write x, that's equal to 18. 2x and x becomes 3x. 3x equals 18. So what's x? 18 divided by 3, you get 6. Now you need to find out the y value. We can easily find out using the first equation. So when you take the first equation, x, x is 6 equals 3y. So what is y? You need to divide this by 3. 6 divided by 3, you get y as 2. So what are the solutions in this equation? We got x equals 6 and y equals 2. Now we look at exercise 15.2 in your textbook. Solve each of the following pair of simultaneous equations. You have given two equations, label first, then look at the coefficients. When you look at coefficients here, 1 and 2, here 2 and 5, both are not the same. So you have to make the coefficients equal. Which one is easy? Either to make the x coefficient or the y coefficient. We can see when you multiply the first equation by 2, you get same as 2x. So it's the easiest one. We'll take the first equation multiplied by 2. What you get? 2 times 1, 2x. 2 times 2, 4y. 2 times 10, 20. So we can take this one as the third equation. Now we have second and third equation with same coefficient of x. Now look at the sign plus 2x and plus 2x. Same sign, what we do? We can subtract the two equations. Which way is easy? 2 minus 3 or 3 minus 2? 
here 20 and 2, we can do 3 minus 2. Now we'll subtract, take the third one, subtract the second one, 2x minus 5y. What you get on the right hand side? 20 minus 2. 20 minus 2 is 18. Now simplify. 2x, 2x get cancelled out. You get 4y minus minus 5y. What you get? Plus 5y is equal to 18. Now 4 and 5, you get 9. 9y equals 18. How can we find out y? We divide by 9. You get 2. Now, how can we find out the x value? You have to either take the first or second and substitute. Which one? I'll take the second one now. Substitute y equals 2. 2x minus 5. Y is now 2. 5 times 2 is equal to 2. 2x minus 10 equals 2. How can we do the next step? I can take minus 10 to the other side. 2x equals 2 plus 10 becomes 12. x becomes 12 divided by 2. You get 6. So what's, what are the solutions for this equation? x equals 6 and y equals 2. Next one, you have again given two equations. Label these two. Now, x is equal to 3y. I can substitute x instead of 3y. So, we can take the second equation and substitute x is there instead of 3y I can write x. x and x becomes 2x is equal to 12. How can we find out x? We can divide by 2. So the answer is 6. Now find y. We can easily take from first one. x is 3y. So 6 equals 3y. What's the y value? 6 divided by 3, you get 2. So the answer is x equals 6 and y equals 2. Now look at carefully this one. Which one we can make it the same coefficients? Here 2 and 1, 1 and 2. So anything you can do either we can make the coefficient of m equal or n. So I'll take this as 1, this as 2. I'll make coefficients of m are equal. So I'll, I need to multiply the equation 2 by 2. 2 times m, 2m. 2 times 2, 4. And 2 times 4, Eight. That's my third equation. Now, this and this we need to compare. Same coefficient of m and same sign. What we do? Do we subtract or add? Here, same sign, so we need to subtract. Which way is easy? 1 minus 3 or 3 minus 1? 4m is bigger, so I can do 3 minus 1. 2m, 2m get cancelled out. 4n minus n. 8 minus 5 on the right hand side. 8 minus 5 is 3. 4n minus n becomes 3n. So what is n value? 3 divided by 3, you get 1. Now take either 1 or 2 and substitute. I'll take the first one. 2m plus n is 1 is equal to 5. 2m equals, take 1 to the other side, 5 minus 1 becomes 4. m is 4 divided by 2, you get 2. 
So what's the answer? M is 1, M is 2. Look at this one. Both coefficients are unequal. So if we take the coefficients of x, we have to multiply the first one by 2 and the second by second one by 3. If we take coefficient of y, we just need to multiply the first equation by 3. So which one is easy? Making the coefficient of y equal. So I'll do first one multiplied by 3. 3 times 3, 9. And you get 3y. Three, 3 times 14. 3 times 4, 12. 1 remaining. 3 times 1, 3 plus 1. Four. So you get 42. That's my third equation. Now we can see second and third equation. The coefficient of y both are equal. So you can subtract the two equations because both signs are the same. I can do 3 minus 2 to get rid of this y coefficient. 9x minus 2x is equal to 42 minus 21. What is 42 minus 21? I get 21 here. This is 7 here. What's the mistake I have done? Instead of y, I have to write here x because you are getting 2x there. 9x minus 2x, I get 7x. So what's x? 21 divided by 7. That's 3. Now take the first equation and substitute. x equals 3. 3 times 3, 9. 9 plus y equals 14. What's y value? 14 minus 9. That's 5. So the answer is x equals 3. And y equals 5. This one. Both are unequal. So you have to either make the x coefficient equal or y coefficients equal. I can do making the, I can equate the x coefficients equal. So what I need to do? 1 multiplied by 3, second one multiplied by 2. First one multiplied by 3, you get 6x, 15y, 27. That's my third equation. Second one multiplied by 2, you get 6x, 4y, is equal to 16. That's my fourth one. Now, same coefficient, same sign, we need to subtract the two equations. 3 minus 4. 15 minus 4. 27 minus 16. You get 11y is equal to 11. So, what's the y value? 11 divided by 11, you get 1. Now take first one and substitute. 2 times x, 2x plus 5 times 1, you get 5. That's equal to 9. 2x equals 9 minus 5. 9 minus 5, you get 4. x becomes 4 divided by 2, you get x equals 2. So what's the answer? You get x equals 2 and y equals 1. Look at this one. Both are unequal. So you have to make it equal. Here you have to multiply by 7. So which one is easy? Making coefficient of equal 
coefficient of n equal. So I can multiply the first one by 2, second by 3. 2 times 4, 8 and you get here 2 times 7, 14. That's my third one. Multiply this by 3, 3 times 7, 21, 3 times 2, 6, 3 times 22, get 66. That's my fourth equation. Same sign, same coefficient, you subtract the two equations. I can do 4 minus 3. 21 minus 8. Here I get 66 minus 14. 21 minus 8, I get 13. 66 minus 14, I get 52. So what's that? 52 divided by 13, that's 4. So m equals 4. Find n now. Take first one. 4 times 4. That's because that's 4m. Minus 3n equals 7. 4 times 4, 16. Minus 3n equals 7. Minus 3n is 7 minus 16. You get minus 9. Minus 3n is minus 9. What's n? Minus n minus divide by minus 3, you get positive 3. So n equals 3, m equals 4. This one, again, same concept. Unequal coefficients, you have to make it equal. So it's easy to make y coefficients equal. I can multiply the first one by 2, second by 3. 2 times 8, 16. 2 times 3, 6y. 2 times 1, 2. That's my third y. Multiply this by 3. 3 times 3, 9x. 3 times 2, 6y. 3 times this one, 48. That's fourth one. Now, same coefficient, different sign. Now, we need to add the two equations. So, I'll do 3 plus 4. 16 plus 9. This get cancelled out. 2 plus 48. 2 plus 48 is 50 and you get 25x. So, x equals 50 divided by 25, that's 2. Again, substitute to one of the equation and find out the y value. When I take the first one and x equals 2, 8 times 2, 16, minus 3y equals 1, minus 3y becomes 1 minus 16, that's minus 15. So, what's y? Minus 15 divided by minus 3, you get plus 5. So the solution for this one is x equals 2 and y equals 5. This one, think about which one is easy. Multiply by 9, 6 or 4, 5. I think making y coefficients equal is easy. So I, I can take 1 and 2. 1 multiplied by 4. Second 1 multiplied by 5. One t this one, four, 4 times 6, 24. You get 20. 4 times 5, 20. That's my third one. Multiply second equation by 5. 45x. 20y equals 5 times 9, 45. 4 remaining, 5 times 1, 5 plus 4, 9. That's my fourth one. Same coefficient with different signs. We need to add the two equations. When you add these two, 
I get 69x is equal to 150. So what's x? 115 divided by 69. We can't simplify, so we can write down this one as 1 and how many? 69, 1. The remainder is 46. So 46 over 69. When you simplify this, 23 times 2, 23 times 3. So what's the answer? 1 and 2 thirds. Now we need to substitute 1 and 2 thirds for the either first equation or second equation and find out the y value. So which one is easy? In here both this is multiplied by 3. So that means you can either take 1 or 2. I'll take the first one. 6x. X is I can write as improper fraction 3 times 1, 3 plus 2, 5 over 3 instead of 1 and 2 thirds. So 6 times 5 over 3 plus 5y equals 5. 3 and 6, I get 2. 2 times 5, 10. So 5y equals 5 minus 10. 5 minus 10 is minus 5. So what is y? Minus 5 divided by 5, you get minus 1. So the solution is minus 1 for y and x is 1 and 2 thirds. This one here, yeah. all terms are in the same side when you look at the second equation. So it's easy to take it to the other side and rewrite. I can take this one as 1. Instead of the second equation, I can write this as minus 17. 17, take it to the other side. First one I can multiply by 2 and the second one I can multiply by 3. 2 times 3 6x, 2 times 4 8, 2 times 9 18. That's my third equation. Second one multiply by 3. 6x, 15y, 3 times 7, 21, 3 times 1 2, 2 plus 2, 3 times 7, 21, 3 times 1, 3 plus 2, 5. So I get minus 51 for this one. Now, same coefficient, same sign. Subtract the two equations. I'll do 3 minus 4. 6x, 6x get cancelled out. 8y minus minus 15 becomes plus 15. 18 minus minus 51 becomes plus 51. This is 69 and this is 23. So y equals 69 divided by 23, that's 3. Substitute to one of the equations and find out the x value. I'll take the first equation. 3x plus 4 times 3, I get 12, that's equal to 9. 3x equals 9 minus 12 minus 3. 3x equals minus 3, x equals minus 1. So answer is x equals minus 1 and y equals Let's take this one. It's like x and y both in, you know, 
terms in both sides. So, what is the first step we can do? We have to simplify and take y terms to the same side. So, what's the first step? Take the first one, expand brackets and simplify the y terms. 3x is there, minus 4y plus 8y. You get plus 4y. 16 plus 1, 17. That's my first equation now. Second one, expand brackets and simplify. I can write here 2 times 2x is 4x plus 6y equals 26 minus y. Now I can take y terms to other side. 4x is there. 6y plus y. I get 7y equals 26. That's my second equation. Now you have to make the coefficients equal. I'll look at the coefficient of x. 1 multiplied by 4, 2 multiplied by 3. 4 times 3, 12. 4 times 4, 16. 4 times 17, 68. That's my third equation. Second one multiplied by 3, 12x, 21y, 3 times 6, 18, 1 remaining, 3 times 2, 6 plus 1, 7. So that's the fourth one. Same coefficient and same sign. We need to subtract the two equations. I'll do 4 minus 3. X terms get cancelled out. 21 minus 16 is equal to 78 minus 68. That's 10. What you get here? You get 5y. 5y is 10. y equals 10 divided by 5. It's 2. Substitute to the first equation. y equals 2. So 3x. 3x plus 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8 is equal to 17. 3x equals 17 minus 8. That's 9. x equals 9 divided by 3. You get 3. So what's the solution? x equals 3 and y equals Two. There's a worded problem now. Read it carefully and try to form an equation and then solve. The price of two baby shirts and three pairs of baby shorts is 1150. Three baby shirts and a pair of baby shorts cost 850. Taking the price of baby shirt as x. So it's baby shirt as x. And baby shorts as y. Construct two simultaneous equations and find the price of a baby shirt and that of a pair, pairs of baby shorts separately by solving the two equations. So first thing you have to make the two equations. Read the first sentence again. The price of two baby shirts, that's 2x and Three pairs of baby shorts is equal to 1150. That's my first equation. Look at the second sentence. Three baby shirts, that's 3x, and a pairs of baby shorts. Pairs of baby shorts means one pair of shorts. So 1y is equal to 850. Now look at the two simultaneous equations. I can make the same 
coefficient of same as coefficient of y here only by multiplying the equation 2 by 3. Take the equation 2, multiply by 3. 3 times 3, 9. 3 times y, 3y. Three, 3 times this, 2550. That's my third equation. And when I look at first and third one, I can see same coefficient of y and same sign. So I need to subtract the two equations. I'll do 3 minus 1 because 9 is bigger than 2. 9x minus 2x, I get 7x. This minus this, 2550 minus 1150. When I subtract this, I get 1400 x is equal to 1400 divided by 7 that's 200 what's the y value you can take the second equation why i am taking the second equation you can straight away find out the y value so 3 times x 3 times 200 600 plus y equals 850 what's the y value 850 minus 600 you get 250 so what's the price of baby shirt baby shirt is 200 rupees and Baby short is 250 rupees. Look at third question. Dinithi's father tells Dinithi, my age is now four times your age. Eight years earlier, I was 12 times older than you. Find the present ages of the father and Dinithi separately. I can take the present age of father as x and present age of Dinithi as y. Now read the question. My age is now. That means father's age is now four times your age. Four times Dinithi's age. That's the first equation. Second one, eight years earlier. Now, eight years earlier, what's father's age? Now, x is the age. Eight years earlier, that's x minus eight. Eight years earlier, I was 12 times older than you. Now, 12 times. Now, what's the age of Dinithis? Now, Dinithi is y, 8 years earlier, y minus 8. So, that times 12, because 12 times older than you. That's the second equation. We need to solve this. I can first expand brackets, take the second one. Expand brackets. X minus 8 is equal to 12y minus 96. That's the third one. Now, look at carefully. X is 4y. I can write instead of x, this is 4y. Then simplify. 12y minus 4y, I can write 8y is equal to 96 minus 8. 96 minus 8, I get 88. So, what is y value? 88 divided by 8, I get 11. Now, 
using the first equation, I can find the x value. x is equal to 4 times y value. So, what's 4 times 11? 44. So, what's father's age? Father's age is 44 years. And what's Diniti's age? Diniti's age is the y value. That's 11 years. Now we look at what are quadratic equations. Earlier we did simple equations and then simultaneous equations. Now we have to look at quadratic equations. We did this before. When you get any equation in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c form, we call this is, an, this is a quadratic equation. Here we see that a cannot be equal to 0. Why? When this is 0, you get a simple equation. So a cannot be 0. So for example, I can write 2x squared minus 5x plus 1 equals 0. So this is a quadratic equation. You get x squared term, x term and a constant. Or you can get x squared term and the x term only. And this can be 0. That's also a quadratic equation. Or I can get minus 2x squared plus 5 equals 0 without the x term. This is also quadratic equation. So these type of equations we call quadratic equations. So remember the maximum power of x is 2. Before we solve quadratic equations, we will take simple equations like this. 2x equals 10. How can we find x? 10 divided by 2, you get 5. 3x equals 15. What's x? 15 divided by 3, you get 5. Minus 5x is 10. How can we find out x? 10 divided by minus 5, you get minus 2. Now look at these ones. So similarly, how can we find out x here? 2x is 0. x equals 0 divided by 2. 0 divided by any number? You are getting 0. This one, x is 0 divided by minus 3. Again, this is 0. Look at this one. First, we can get rid of this. I can rewrite this as x over 2 is 0 over 1 and cross multiply. What happens? x times 1, x. 2 times 0, 0. x equals 0. Now, we saw we multiply 2 with 0 or minus 3 with 0 or half with 0. Whenever you multiply by an, any number with 0, the answer is 0. So, remember that when you see a 0, always the multiplication becomes 0. So, when you use that theory, you can write down when you have any two numbers multiplication and if it's 0, what are the conclusions? Like before, 2 times 0, you got 0. Minus 3 times 0, you got 0. Here A can be 2, B can be 0. So when you have two terms like this, either we can say 
A should be zero or B should be zero to get the answer zero. So like here, two here. A is 2, B is 0, the answer is 0 or A equals minus 3. I can write B equals minus 3 and A equals 0. And also when you get 0 times 0 also, you get 0. So when you have an equation like this with two terms multiplication and the multiplication is zero that means we can write either a is zero or b is zero so this is a this is an important rule when you are solving quadratic equations so remember this when you are solving quadratic equations now we will take these examples. This is a multiplication. Multiplication becomes zero. What's the conclusion? We can straight away write when the multiplication is zero, either the first term is zero or the second term. Second term here is x plus 3. So this is like a and b. I can write instead of this a, this is b. a times b is 0. Then what are the solutions? Either x is 0 or here x is equal to 3. Take it to the other side. Minus 3. So you get two solutions here. Either 0 or minus 3. Now look at this one. 2x and x minus 3. So this is like a. This is like b. What's the conclusion? 2x is 0 or x minus 5 is 0. So what's the solution? You get 0 divided by 2, x equals 0. Or x equals, take minus 5 to the other side, you get 5. So these are the two solutions, 0 or minus. 0 plus 5. This one, this is as A, this is as B. Product is 0. You can straight away write either this becomes 0 or this term becomes 0 and solve for x. When you take 3 to the other side, that's minus 3. Minus 2 to the other side, positive 2. So you get two solutions minus 3 or plus 2. This one, this or this. 2x plus 1 equals 0 or 3x minus 2 equals 0. Take one to the other side. 2x equals minus 1. So what is x? Minus 1 over 2 minus half or when you take minus 2 to the other side you get 3x equals 2 x becomes 2 thirds so what are the solutions minus half or 2 thirds now we'll look at example 1 in your textbook solve the equation now this is a quadratic equation so we know when you have a product equal to 0, we can write one of the factor is 0 or the second factor is 0. But here we can't see the factor. So what's the first step we have to do? We have to factorize and make it to two factors. x is common, take it out. What's remaining? x is remaining and 2 is remaining there. So instead of this, I can write as a product. Now we know if the product is 0, we can write either this one 0 or this part is 0. 
if this is zero, I can straight away write down by taking two to the other side, that's minus two. So the answer is either x equals zero or x equals minus two. Example number two, again a quadratic equation, square term, x term and the constant. First, we need to factorize. Remember how we factorized before? Look at the last term and try to find out the factors. Factors of plus 2, when you add the factors, you are getting the middle term minus 3. So we can straight away write down the two factors like this. x squared is definitely x and x. Factors of plus 2, 2 and 1. But the middle term is minus 3. So this should be minus 2 and minus 1. Product is 0. That means you can write first factor is 0 or the second factor is 0. So you get x equals 2 or x equals 1. Example 3. Solve the equation. Again, a quadratic equation equal to 0. Factorize. What are the factors? You get x, x. Factors of 21. When you add the factors, you are getting 4. What are the factors? 7 times 3. Middle term is minus and the last term is minus 21. So 1 is negative. The bigger number is negative and this is positive. Because minus 7 and plus 3, you are getting minus 4. Now, the product is 0. You can write this one is 0 or the other factor is 0. x equals 7 or x equals minus 3. Exercise 15.3 in your textbook. Solve each of the following quadratic equations. These two already factors are given and equate to 0. Straight away I can write either this is 0 or this one is 0. When you solve that, I'm getting 2 or 3 as the answer. This one, product is 0. First product factor is 0 or second factor is 0. So when you simplify you get minus 2 or x equals 5 as the answer. Again these two also factors given. Straight away I can write first factor is 0 or the second factor is 0. Answer here 4 and here also 4. So here one solution is there in this equation that's x equals 4. This one product is 0. Either this one is 0 or the second one is 0. When you simplify this one you get x equals 1 or what's the other solution? Take 1 to the other side, 1, divide by 2, you get plus half. These two, again, factors are given. This is one factor, this is the other factor. So we can straight away write down, first factor is 0 or the second factor is 0. When you simplify this, you get minus 3. This one, product is 0, first one is 0 or the second one is 0. When you solve this, you get 2y equals 3 and y becomes 3 over 2. Now, these two, the factors are not given. So, you have to factorize. And what are these two? These are quadratic equations but two terms. 
Can you remember how to factorize difference between two squared terms? 16 is 4 squared. How can we write down the factors? 1 is positive and 1 is negative. Then first one is 0 or the second one is 0. You get x equals minus 4 or x equals 4. Or you can use this method without converting to factors. I can write x squared is take minus 16 to this side plus 16. How can we find out x? Take the square root of 16. Square root of 16 you get plus or minus value. So that's how you get the same answer. This one. If you are using difference between two square terms, what are the factors? I can rewrite this as 2x whole thing squared and 1 whole thing squared. Then I see the factors are 2x plus 1 and 2x minus 1. Then the product is 0 means this is 0 or the other one is 0. x becomes take minus 1 to the other side, that's minus 1, divide by 2. Again, do the same thing, divide by 2, you get x as plus or minus half. This one, now x term with the square term, you can factorize. 9x is common, take it out. What's remaining? X is there. 3 is here. Now we already factorize. Product is 0 means we can straight away write down this is 0 or the other factor is 0. When you solve this, 0 divided by 9, you get 0. Here you get 3. This one you have to factorize because quadratic equation is given. What are the factors? x squared you get x and x. Factors of 36 to get 15. What are the factors? So many factors are there 6 and 6, 9 times 4 and what else? 12 times 3. Which one? You get 15, 12 times 3. Both positive, so you get positive here. Product is 0 means you can straight away write down either this is 0 or this one is 0. What's the answer? You get minus 12 or minus 3. This one, there is a number in front of x squared. So you need to be careful when you are factorizing this equation. How can we do that? There are two methods. If you can straight away write down the factors, it's good. But if you can't write down, use trial and error method or cross method. How can we find out? 2x squared, it's 2x and x. And what are the factors of 2? 2 and 1. So, you need to put 2 and 1 here. If I put 2 here, what happens? 2 and 1 here, 2 times 2, 4, 4 and 1, 5. And the middle term is minus 5. That means both should be minus. So that's how we find out the factors this way. If you are using the cross method, you write the factors of 2x squared here and factors of 2 here. You can write and see. Cross multiply and add it, you should get the middle term. When you write like this, 2x and 2x becomes 4x. So that means 
this is not the correct order. So we have we can change this to 2 and 1. Now we see 2 times 2, 4, 4 and 1, you get 5. But both minus, that means you put minus and write down the factors this way. 2x minus 1 and x minus 2. So you can use any method. Now we found out the factors. Fact, the product is equal to 0. You can write either this is 0 or this is 0. Now solve. x becomes half. Take 1 to the other side and divide by 2. x equals 2 for this equation. Now look at this one. Factorize, you get two terms. Factorize only x is common. Take it out. 2x minus 5. Product is 0, that means either this is 0 or the second term is 0. So when you solve that, you get x equals 5 divided by 2. Because minus 5, when you take it to, to the other side, that becomes 5 divided by 2, 5 over 2. This one, two terms are there. So the easiest way is to Take it to the same side. I'm taking 6x to the other side and rewrite the equation. Now I can factorize. 2x is common. Take it out. You get x minus 3. Product is 0. Either this is 0 or the second term 0. Here when you solve that, 0 divided by any number is 0. And here, when you take minus 3 to the other side, you get plus 3. x squared is 25. Either you can take square root both sides, then you get plus or minus 5. Or you can take it to one same side and use difference between two square terms. 5 squared is there. You get x minus 5 or x plus 5 as the factors. Then the product is 0. That means either x minus 5 is 0 or x plus 5 is 0. So what's the answer? x equals 5 or x equals minus 5. This one. What? How can we do? We can take it to the same side. This becomes minus 16. And use difference between two square terms. So this is, this one I can write 4 squared. Apply difference between two square terms. I get x plus 3 plus 4 as one factor. x plus 3 minus 4 as the other factor. When you simplify, you get x plus 7, x minus 1. Product is 0 means you can write as the first product is 0 or the second product is 0. You get x equals minus 7 or x equals 1. Next one, x squared term on the left hand side, all the other terms on the right hand side. First step is to take all terms to one side. Now try to factorize. Factors of 36, when you add the factors, you are getting minus 9. xx is x squared. Factors of 36, what are the factors? 6 times 6, 12 times 3 and 6 times 6, 12 times 3. So you need minus 9. What's the suitable factors? 12 and 3. You are getting middle term minus. So the bigger number should be minus. Product is 0. That means either this is 0 or the other term is 0, you get 12 
or minus 3. This one. Square term is 0. So straight away you can use the square root term. When you take square root of 0, you get 0. So when you, I can do square root. 2x minus 3 is the square root of 2x minus 3 squared. Square root of 0 is 0. So what's the answer? 2x equals 3. x becomes 3 over 2. This one. Here we did the same question before. Again we'll do it. Here factorize this. You get x out. And product is 0 means either x equals 0 or this term is 0. What's the answer? x equals 5 over 2. This question. Now look at this one. Both sides you get x terms and square terms. So here you can expand brackets and take all terms to one side. So we'll expand brackets. Use FOIL method or rainbow method. First with first, x into x, x squared. First with last or outside numbers, x with minus 2, minus 2x. Inside with inside, minus 1 into x, minus 1x. Then last with last, minus 1 into minus 2 you get plus 2. That's equal to 2x squared minus 3x minus 2. Take all terms to one side. I'm taking all left-hand side numbers to right-hand side number. So 2x squared minus x squared. I get x squared. Minus 3x. Here you get minus 3x as well. When you simplify, you get minus 3x. So both get cancelled out because minus 3x plus 3x, 0. Here minus 2, minus 2, you get minus 4. This is difference between two square terms. I can write like this and factorize. What are the factors? Plus 2 and negative 2. Then the product is 0 means I can write this one 0 or the other one 0. x becomes minus 2 or plus 2. This one, two fractions are there. I can cross multiply. x plus 3 multiplied by x. 2 times 3x plus 2. Now multiply. x with x, x squared. x with, with 3, 3x. 2 times 3, 6x. 2 times 2, 4. Now take all terms to one side. x squared. 3x minus 6x. I get minus 3x. And plus 4, when I take it to this side, this becomes minus 4. Now, factorize. x and x is there. Factors of minus 4 to get minus 3. What are the factors? 4 and 1. Middle term is minus means the bigger number is minus. Product is 0. Either this is 0 or this factor is 0. You can write down the answer as 4 or minus 1. In this section, we covered how to solve simple equations, simultaneous and quadratic equations. So remember all these steps and make sure that you practice all the exercises in the textbook.